Hello my friends, my name is Ben, and welcome back to another, and for now, the final episode of the MGN Destiny series, Enemies Explained, where I strip away the hitboxes and the barebones information about the enemies in the world of Destiny, and fill it in with the characteristics, personalities, and the deeper lore. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the House of Salvation. When looking at the House of Salvation, of course, as always, we go back to the origins and the identity. And to begin, we need to ask, what was it? that caused this house to be created. And it's simple. The House of Salvation attempted to be the answer to a question created by the fall of the House of Dusk. Now, I have made articles and videos about the House of Dusk and the House of Kings and the Scorn. If you've seen those, you've probably got some idea of where I'm going. If you don't, or if you haven't seen them, I will try and summarize really briefly now. The House of Dusk was created by the end of Destiny 1 in secret by the House of Kings. The House of Dusk acted as a unifying factor for the fallen of the destroyed old houses that they could all come together and all grudges and bad blood would be abandoned. The House of Dusk was very successful, establishing fronts on various worlds. However, when the Scorn, led by Aldrin Sov, eventually betrayed and destroyed the House of Kings, the real leadership being destroyed for the House of Dusk caused the whole house to be destabilized and so they eventually fell apart and with weakness comes separation and divide now in my house of dusk video and article i talked about where these different separatists went though we had different factions that were kind of formed as a result of this and one of them was a very small faction that tried to revive the House of Devils. Now this could be seen in the House of Devil banners that were flying in the EDZ and also in the Zero Hour mission. I'd love to show you background footage of the Zero Hour mission. Unfortunately, Bungie decided to remove it so I can't do that, but I will tell you what I can about it. In the Rise of Iron expansion for Destiny 1, the Fallen of the House of Devils found the Golden Age technology known as SIVA and so that is how the House of Devils became the Devil Splicers. By the end of the Rise of Viren expansion, we successfully contained Siva, and the Cryptarchs stored what they could of it deep inside of the Old Tower. In Destiny 2, when the Red Legion invaded, the Old Tower was really badly damaged, and so even though we have the city back, and we're in it, and we can do all that kind of stuff, the tower is really badly damaged, and it's still in the midst of being repaired, and so we can't use it. However, all those vaults with all those secret treasures and technologies, that's still there. And so this new faction that was trying to bring back the House of Devils saw this as an opportunity. And so they attempted to get inside the old tower, bypass the security, and reclaim Siva to try and, I guess, become the Devil Splicers again. Now, why is this significant? Yes. They were a faction of the House of Devils that were trying to bring back the house. But what's significant is who their leader was. And this is significant because in my House of Devils video, I covered how the original Kel of the House of Devils was killed ages ago, and yet even still the house persisted. This shows that this house is very, very much determined to survive. And so, the person that we're talking about now is Aramis. In the Zero Hour mission, any major characters that you would fight would have beside their names loyal to Aramis. And this is how we are first introduced to this character. We assume that Aramis is a ship stealer from the House of Devils. Now, we are successful in preventing them from stealing Siva, and we are successful in preventing them from escaping the tower. As a result of this, Aramis follows a different path. Aramis and several other fallen under her would travel to Europa. Why Europa? Simply put, to get away from everything, to be safe, and to be able to try and rebuild some type of fallen society. Because even back during Destiny 1, all the houses were separated and split up, and even when you had the House of Dusk, they were separated and split up across multiple worlds. The fallen haven't had a proper city in centuries. And this is what Aramis wanted to try and do by going to Europa. Another thing that Aramis had going for her was the support of Varix. Varix being the last of the House of Judgment, and like I covered in my House of Judgment article and video, he is the keeper of the old ways, the traditions and the histories of the fallen. And as the last of the old advisors, 
having somebody like him backing you is a really big deal. And so Aramis had a lot going for her by Varix showing his support for her. It would be for Aramis that Varix would cause the distraction in the prison of elders, disabling all the security and escaping. It would be to Aramis that he would go on Europa, and it would be to Europa where Varix would stay for a time. And a lot of Fallen that began leaving the House of Dusk would so go to Aramis on Europa to settle there. And they did settle there. They created a city in the midst of the Golden Age ruins of the Clovis Bray facilities, and they named this Reese Reborn. I believe Reese was the name of a city um, in their home world during their Golden Age. I don't know if it was their capital city or just a big city, but nevertheless, Reese Reborn was made on Europa as the first proper fallen city in a very long time. So everything was going great. Humanity wasn't even aware of a fallen settlement on Europa, so they had privacy. Where did everything go wrong? In the season of arrivals, the pyramid ships, the great harbingers of our collapse, returned in full force. And one of these ships ended up landing on Europa. What Siva should have taught us is that when it comes to anybody that used to be in the House of Devils, when desperate, they will look to a different power other than what they are traditionally used to in order to survive or get an advantage. And although Aramis had her people, and she had her city, the one thing inside of her that she had that she shouldn't have been carrying was her very deep and bitter hatred for humanity over the last couple of centuries. And as a matter of fact, I should actually, I should correct myself, this wasn't just for humanity, this went beyond that to the Traveler. Now, we talked about the relationship between the Fallen and the Traveler with the House of Devils and the House of Kings, about how twice they tried to attack the city in order to reclaim the Traveler to try and get a Golden Age. Aramis had no interest in that. She hated the Traveler. She blamed it for the whirlwind which scattered her people and destroyed their Golden Age, and she wanted revenge. And so when she saw the pyramid ship land on Europa, and she realized that this was an entity capable of fighting the Traveler and damaging it, that is when her own personal plans superseded the plans of protecting her people. And so that is this is where we get the House of Salvation. Aramis and her lieutenants would be given technology by the pyramid ships and those inside. And it would be by the work of one of her lieutenants, Praxis, the technocrat, that they would take a shard from one of these pyramid ships and they would use it to artificially create the power known as stasis. Stasis is what we like to call the darkness abilities that the Guardians are now using on Europa and um, abroad throughout the system, the whole ice powers thing that is stasis, and Aramis and her kind were the first to get it. Praxis, for a time, um, would only be able to give this power to the main lieutenants, so that is Aramis and her, I guess, companions. The rest of the Fallen wouldn't really have this. Some major Fallen would have a, a very small amount of this power, but for the most part, it hadn't been fully distributed yet. So this was the current course of action that the House of Salvation was going on. Like I said at the start, a major key factor that really helped establish Aramis's control and rule on Europa was Varix's support. And by going down this path, she immediately lost Varix. Because like I covered in my House of Judgment video and article, Varix used to be with the House of Wolves until he turned on them. And the exact same reason for this is happening here. He says that he couldn't stomach Scolas's bitterness and hatred. And the exact same thing happened here. So what did Varix do? He took a shard of the pyramid ships, one of the ones I guess that was about to be used or whatever, and he took it, he managed to escape Rees Reborn, and he sent out a distress signal to the Vanguard and to humanity. And as a result of this, the Beyond Light expansion happened, where humanity became aware of the threat on Europa, and so the Guardian or player character, along with Eris Morn, the Stranger, and the Drifter, dealt with it. Before I continue on with the story, because 
The House of Salvation, although very powerful, is very much contained to the Beyond Light expansion. They're only found on Europa, and the main story of this house is contained again in this expansion. So, before I continue on with that briefly, I want to talk about what separates the House of Salvation from other houses. They are very close to being a traditional house, so you do have the hierarchy of the captains, vandals, dregs, that whole system. I haven't seen any implication that there is any desire to change that. However, by this clip of Aramis destroying a servitor, it is potentially the case where servitors were in the process of being phased out of necessity. I talked about servitors, I believe, in the House of Devils video and article and why they were important for Fallen, but if it became a thing where the House of Salvation was fully incorporated with Stasis, every single Fallen had it, perhaps they might not have needed the serv servitors anymore. So I believe that the hatred that Aramis had towards the Traveler extended to the servitors. So I guess that is something that is somewhat similar to Rex's Vaughn from the Scorn and his hatred of the servitors. Now, fun fact, the House of Salvation actually assimilated the Kells Scourge. This was the main fallen antagonistic force of the Black Armory mini-expansion, I would say, in Destiny 2. This was a force led by Civix, who was the younger brother of the Spider, who was situated on the Tangled Shore. And one very interesting aspect of the Kel Scourge is the fact that they were trying to claim Black Armory technology, and they somewhat succeeded. In the in the Scourge of the Past raid, the final boss is actually a servitor who, using Black Armory technology, was able to form a bipedal walker. And so, by the Kel Scourge assimilating with the House of Salvation, the House of Salvation actually had this technology and this understanding as well. And so if you go to Europa, you will see a lot of these types of bipedal walkers with servitors inside controlling them. So that is something that they have that is very unique to them. Apart from that, technology-wise, they are very much similar to the other houses, apart from, of course, the occasional fallen wielding stasis. All right, now that we've discussed, I guess, the identity and the unique characteristics of the House of Salvation, I want to start looking at its leadership. And we are going to begin by looking at Aramis's lieutenants. The first of which being Phylax, the warrior. Phylax, in my personal opinion, was probably the most important lieutenant that Aramis had. And the reason for this is that she is a battle-hardened veteran of Twilight Gap. She's got very good military experience, and this shows as the Fallen of the House of Salvation are far more militarily organized than a lot of the other houses that we have faced before. They act like a proper army. And it really shows by their effectiveness on Europa and how they deal with Guardians and the Vex. Phylax, of course, would be given stasis. However, it would not be enough to stop the Guardian and Phylax would be killed. The next Lieutenant that we have is Praxis. I've mentioned him before. This is the Technocrat. He is the one responsible for giving them stasis, I guess you could say. I think a very common misunderstanding a lot of people that you would ask would have is that they think that the Fallen just have this power through them that in the same way that Guardians have the light. It is artificial. It is through technology. And it is the very core reason why Aramis was defeated in the first place. I don't know how Praxis did it. I believe that it was through looking through the records of Clovis Bray, but he was able to somehow make an artificial connection between fallen bodies and the stasis power. I don't know how he did it, they've never explained it, but that is what his greatest achievement on Europa most likely was. And of course, when Praxis was eventually killed by the Guardian, the production of this type of technology was immediately stopped, and so no more Fallen were able to get their hands on stasis. Next up, we've got Critis the Priestess. She was, suppose, more fanatical about the Pyramid Ships. Aramis saw them as a means to an end, which was, of course, her vengeance. Critis worshipped the whole... everything about them. And that is why, of course, she is called the Priestess. 
She would last even after the main campaign, after Phylax and Praxis had been killed, and she would attempt to revive Aramis and bring her back. Of course, she'd be too late because as the player character, we are invincible, and so yes, we would kill her as well. Next up, we've got Atrax. Atrax would be briefly seen in a cutscene during the Beyond Light campaign. However, after the campaign and beyond that, this character would be nowhere to be seen. It would only be once the raid, the Deepstone Crypt, was released. It would only be then that we would actually encounter this character. And Atrax had a very, very important purpose. The bringing back of Tanix the Scarred. I've mentioned Tanix in my other um, videos and articles as a character who really just doesn't like the idea of dying and he always manages to come back in some form or another and this was another form in which he came back as an exo fallen along with Atrax. Atrax would actually also convert her body into the body of a fallen exo so these two became exos which is of course very interesting and very unique. Of course they would be both destroyed, although my money is on Tanix somehow surviving this again. And yeah, that is all of the lieutenants and the major leadership of the House of Salvation. Finally, let's continue on with the story and what happened to Aramis. Like I said, Varric sent out the distress signal and humanity was alerted to the threat on Europa. The player guardian would arrive, meet up with the stranger, Eris Morn Drifter, and would be tempted and would successfully be goaded into getting stasis. And I've actually talked about this in one of my videos um, that I've made on my channel. The Fallen and the House of Salvation, their real story has nothing to do with Beyond Light. The real story is why they got stasis to begin with. And the core reason for that is our Guardian. If you've played through the season of arrivals back in the day and you did the weekly story missions whenever they actually decided to update it with new story content the final message that the pyramid ships gave the player character was to go to europa the pyramid ships wanted us to go to europa and the reason for that was the pyramid ship on europa now the pyramid ship on Europa wanted us to get stasis, but it didn't just want us to get stasis, it wanted to give us stasis. Why is that important? Well, like I talked about in one of my videos on my channel regarding the Hive, they suffered the unfortunate consequence of given power, that being the chain and the shackles attached to it. And this came in the form of the worms, which Savathun has been desperately trying to get rid of now. The whole concept here was that by the pyramid ships giving us stasis, to a certain extent they now have control over us, because we didn't take that power, it was given to us, and giving is a sign of weakness. Now this is getting really deep into the lore, and this isn't the type of lore that this series has really been, but I want to make that really clear as to this being the true purpose of the House of Salvation. If the pyramid ships or anything relating to that came to us and told us take this power, I do not believe our character would have done that. However, we needed an incentive to do that, and the incentive came in the form of the House of Salvation wielding stasis. The concept being, to fight fire, you need to have fire of your own. And that is really the true reason and the purpose behind the House of Salvation in the end. They were the tool used to get us to have stasis. Once we got stasis, their purpose was done, and so we successfully killed Aramis's lieutenants, confronted her, and the technology that she had been using to wield stasis backfired on her and she was frozen. All right, this leads us to our conclusion. So Aramis is out of the picture, her lieutenants are dead, Tanix is dead, the Deepstone Crypt has been secured. What's left? Well, the current state of the House of Salvation is that it is in complete disarray. Its leadership has been utterly demolished. Stasis is no longer being supplied to them, and they are stuck on Europa with nowhere else to go, having to fight Guardians and the Vex. So again, with weakness comes separation and divide. And so now, the Fallen who want to leave are leaving to go to the House of Light. 
The House of Light is located on Earth, as far as I'm aware, and it is being led by Mithrax, the character that I actually mentioned in my House of Dusk article and video. Mithrax is now aligned with the city, humanity, and the Traveler, and so has labeled his house, the House of Light, as a sign of the alliance between the Traveler and the Fallen once more. Varix, by sending Fallen to the House of Light, now is backing Mithrax and is most likely going to be his advisor in the future. As for the remaining members of the House of Salvation that are staying behind, it is very clear that there is no future for them, and it is very clear that the only path left for them is destruction. And that is it. That is everything to do with the House of Salvation, why they were created, what they attempted to achieve and what they did achieve, and ultimately what led to their downfall and the state that they are currently in. That is the end of the Fallen part of the MGN Destiny series, Enemies Explained. I'm going to be moving on to something a little different after this. I've got some plans in the works and I will update you guys when the time is right. But until then, if you want to see what I've made about the Fallen Houses and other factions to do with the Fallen, I've got videos on the Destiny 2 MGN YouTube channel and blogs on the Destiny 2 MGN website. So please check that out. And yeah, take care.